So, so are you saying that it, it wouldn't be possible to make a remake of Speed in Mumbai? <laughs> Welcome to the center of the world, presented by Antoine Lavati. Hello everyone and welcome to that new episode of Welcome to the Center of the World presented by Antoine Lavati. Tonight my guest and my friend is Madhu Tejis, is from India. How did we met? Well, um, well, it was the first level of Dacia. Um, so we started last year in 2019. That was in March. That was in March. That, that was definitely so it's like our first March. anniversary of yes, friendship. That's nice. Man, that's really that's cool. unexpected. It was really nice. Like we started to study Netherlands right. Dutch together. Right. Well, that was really something uh, that I wanted to do with the Dutch is something I wanted to start long back. I did a lot of try before, but something that really clicked me is it's very important if I need to be here in Belgium. I need to have a, a strong knowledge of Dutch, especially being in ID. So I said, okay, let's do it. Uh, so that's where I started. Um, that's where I met you and all the other people are as well. That's, that's, that's kind of crazy. So we were doing that intense level. It right. was four right. times per week, three that, hours. It was extreme. It was like 12 hours of our life every <laughs> week dedicated to Dutch. And for most of us, it was like after work stuff. Right. Man, it was right. like <laughs> so unique experience. I mean, I don't know what, like, what was really the cement between us, but we kind of made that group of people. So, so, so the group was basically like five or six people, something like that. Axel from Norway, Irem from Turkey, Kenzo from France, and then there were like other people. It was like crazy good time. Yeah, yeah. and definitely it was not so easy uh, when you're walking and coming and when your lerar <laughs> your lecture yeah. is not so easy guys so we had back to back tons of paper that we Man. used to collect in the end of the day with books filled with a lot of exercises but it was really that we went through well and then it was really good we did progress well over there i'm really mm. happy that we were part of it man they probably like one forest that was destroyed somewhere in the world <laughs> because of us. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> it was terrible. It was very hard to even ensure that all the pages were in intact. For us, it was very hard just before the exam to find out what is that supposed to read. In and I was hour. starting my job still. So I was after seven hours and a half of hard work. And then I was just arriving there and I was tired. How many times did I fell asleep? During the class, a lot. I'm sure a lot of time. Oh my God. Peter is definitely behind you. Like, okay, wake <laughs> up, Antoine. But yeah, it was it was a different experience altogether because there are people from different nations around, and everyone had different accent. I had my tough time when I was trying to <laughs> get rid of my English accent while trying to learn that. So it was not definitely not easy. So it was something a different experience altogether. I remember, like, really, even though being tired and everything, having pleasure going to the lesson. Right. Like enjoying going to the lesson with a big smile on my face because I knew that I would meet like all my friends and most probably we will plan to do something at some point. And right. that was like a really strong social experience. Right. Especially the fun of uh, singing in the end of the class. When <laughs> it was like a big chorus group that we used to have singing all the kids songs that used to come up or pop up in 90s or 80s yeah. that we used to sing all together. It was really nice experience. Yeah, that was fun. The kind of interactions that we had was so much of fun because being coming, uh, sitting in a different uh, or being part of um, a different group or uh, away from your home, it's very hard that you do have a connection with a lot of people from different countries. So it's very unique that you are trying to also share the culture between them the way they they try to you know speak or they would try to understand the how 
how they you going to you know work out the things even in a small uh, set of exercises that you're doing so it's something that i will always try to remember so that peter did a good job in that way where he used to ensure that we were all together doing multiple different exercises and having a lot of fun so it was really a Man, good, great experience if i must make a parallel between my experience of studying uh, dutch with peter and basically about the study of all of us meeting it was like an episode of sense8 yes because we realized through time that we were all different but all bonded in so many ways about kindness about friendship about solidarity about community about sharing social intelligence yes d- definitely you know Kevin, if you like definitely comparing with the sense8 there was uh, also a touch of connections between between us where we were trying to ensure that we could also not only learn but also try to try to share what we have what we've been learning uh, not only from from the lessons but also from our past experience so that way it was really nice yeah just to imagine the context a guy from norway a girl from turkey a guy from france there was a girl from morocco there was armenia armenia and and like mixing all the people together it was like really amazing right because it's it's during the exercise it's not only that you learn learn dutch but you also start to talk to them about their you know personal country you know life their uh, the way of living you know the kind of the food that they make so it's not only just learning dutch but also to get to know about the the their culture so mm-hmm. that was something really unique you know also another really cool thing is that we were kind of all from the same age right let's say from from the inner circle you're the oldest i think right uh, but right. but you're like 35 so right. it's really like in 10 years there were like six or seven different people indeed yeah i i think i was the second oldest <laughs> and then there is axel and then there is uh, iram then there is kenzo and uh, yeah and after there was like justin Mm-hmm. in the in the other uh, classes right so it's always like something really evolving and really cool yeah so irrespective of our age that we were really connected as friends we did enjoy our company each other and we did had a lot of uh, parties after that we yeah did, man we did go out we had a, we had a gathering over here we had a really dope uh, oh man the dope experience over here we really had a good fun the the, the birthday party that i threw yeah. it was that kind of party that you know you can't really forget about it indeed indeed i mean it's that kind of party uh, my birthday is like uh, just an excuse to celebrate but from there we were like i was free to do whatever i wanted and i had that idea to just warn my my uh, neighbors that there are going to be <laughs> some noise that night it started around 8:39 and 30 seconds later it was 3 a.m. and we were like whoa <laughs> for me what stands out the, the the most is the quality time we had and because of that the the, the evening the night went just super fast right there were like 13 different people from <laughs> many different countries you you were really amazing as a host you did ensure that everyone had a really good time um it's not easy with so many 13 different people from different places all around uh to ensure that everyone are connected but you were really played as a very Man, good host you i really i honestly them. honestly the cool really things nice. I didn't even really care about <laughs> being a host. I just I just wanted to have my fun. Yeah. And that's that just went well and that's it. So yeah, uh we also went to some bars together. Oh, we went uh, at the we were at the Atomium when you were doing that uh the, the Indian, Indian food stuff. The, yes, the Indian Diwali uh, festival. That was that was really an amazing uh, experience. Glad you guys all came over there. You guys So what was the context of that uh, that festival? Well, that that was uh, an annual festival that happens. So basically, that's an in Indian festival, wherein it is a celebration of victory of uh, good over evil. So what happens is, uh, as part of the festival, we lit lights. You know, the lights can be uh, in 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 form of um, you know uh, lighting the diyas or the or the lanterns 
across the country. So it's not only a, an activity to light some uh, things, but also to celebrate with your family, where you where you uh, prepare good dishes, good food. You enjoy uh, creating some. You're having some games with your family, so it's a lot of fun where everyone get together, have some lot of energy and lot of fun all together. So this festival, which was I, I believe it was the second or third edition of uh, of this uh, Diwali festival happening in Brussels near Atomium, uh, where there were more than twenty to thirty different food stalls. Yeah, man. And along with that, there was these events of uh, the Bollywood dance mm -hmm. and the DJ that comes up later, and followed by the fireworks, which usually happens at nine p.m. So it's a pack of everything together in one festival. There were more than I would say nine to ten thousand people on wow. one single day since morning to evening. So we were really having a lot of fun. So we had our food stall. We prepared a lot of Indian foods and curry, and it was um, it was a really uh, nice time that we had. It was really good fun. People did had a lot of fun over there. They really were spiced up with a lot of spices from Man. India. And I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure you guys did have a lot of man, good time as it well. It was, it was just cool. I think that the food mainly, like everybody was like throwing his money to fill their belly and it was just too cute to see because it looked delicious. And I took like two or three different things and each of them were delicious. I took those uh, kind of fried vegetables uh -huh. and those vegetarian uh, donuts mm -hmm. with the vegetables in it. And probably something with rice and ve and, and the and, curries, but a vegetarian one. Uh -huh. Everything was so delicious. It, it was really really good day. Uh, so so when is it that festival? So that usually happens uh, usually somewhere in November, but between October to November based on the weather. So last time was pretty decent one. The year before was really cold because it's it's most important because at this festival it ends up with a great grand firework. So it's very important to the weather to have, uh, especially when it's clear sky, it's really nice to see this fireworks. Up. Yeah, man. So uh, October, November, be in Brussels for that festival. <laughs> right. I can totally recommend that. Right. What's the name of the festival again? Uh, it's the Diwali Festival. Diwali, Diwali Fest that's the name of the festival. Diwali. Maybe I could put the information on the, 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 the podcast presentation. That people could be interested sure, in that. Sure, sure. And most, more, more important is the, the the bigger festival. I'm not sure because how the things are happening mm -hmm. now. We are in in mid of uh, the epidemic. Yeah. So um, we are also having another big festival that's coming up uh, end of July. That's uh, the the big Indian food festival. Yeah. Well, in the past even if it epidemic. doesn't happen this year, it will happen the next year. Yes. Yes. So. Yes. No so, worries about it. Right. If we actually get back to you in Brussels, because that's where we met and you learned Dutch, you told me about like all those uh, professional opportunities could uh, open to learn Dutch. But then <laughs> I'm going to ask you a simple question. Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I come from India, uh, the south of India, a place called Bangalore. Well, Bangalore is a city where IT is the hub over there. IT is growing. So you'd find a lot many engineers getting rolled out of colleges than any of other, uh, I would say, occupation of people. India, well, it's a, it's a very large place. So uh, south of India uh, itself is more, you know, a big size, you know, there are, there are more than multiple uh, states in the south and we have different languages. So I'm from a state called Karnataka and I can speak uh, a language called Canada. Okay. Along with, uh, along with Hindi and there are three, four other regional languages from the states that surround my state. So yeah, being in Bangalore, you would end up learning more than five to six languages. <laughs> Bangalore is really famous for IT. Right. You'll not believe the number of colleges in the IT colleges in Bangalore itself are more than 100. It's really huge. Every single person who gets into his secondary education is almost is sure that he's going to do engineering, especially the this computer science or the IT engineering. 
So people have a mindset is that being successful is to have a degree of having an engineer. It, when it's in IT engineering, that kind of becomes logical because more and more and more people are going to transfer competencies to soft things, to dematerialized things, to IT. And it's going to be a lot of uh, software engineering and maintenance and whatsoever needs to just, you know, be able to to make the system sustainable, like less and less we're going to have the physical stuff. Right, definitely. You know, IT is is the future, right? And we, in especially in India, we have a lot of these services that have been activated or been funded from a lot of other countries, especially in other developed countries, uh, uh, especially IT has a huge uh, market in US um, or in other, uh, like in Australia or in Europe itself. There are a lot of outsourcing that happens back to Bangalore. We have Bangalore has a lot of many bigger IT centers where their focus is to provide IT services at a less cost. So that's, that's where it triggers a huge business back uh, in India where the, the cost of setting up your services is way lower. I would say uh, one third of the price is what you expect in other developing countries. So uh, considering that, uh, you would definitely would like to build your future generations in a in set of technologies that would help you to create more jobs, but also to, to progress towards a smarter country. Yeah, definitely. It's like a long-term plan. I think it's really smart. Hopefully, a lot of those engineers that for a lot of them leave the country, I hope that some will come back at some point. Yes. With the money, with the <laughs> with the competencies, you know, I'm really really confident in for the future of that that country. So you're talking about coming from Bangalore. Uh, I was born in a place called Bangalore. Um, it is close to another state called Kerala. I I was actually born in a village, you know, a very okay. remote village uh, in in India. Okay. Uh, well, it's still still getting developed. It's still called a town than a village now. Okay. But um, where I was born in a house where um, I had a very uh, large joint family. I had uh, more than five to six uh, my of my aunties and my uncle that I used to live with. It was a very big house, so I, I I was born over there. So and it was it's a really totally different experience when you're coming out from a very remote village of India because you will start valuing all that you get in your life um, when you're experienced to a sort of luxury when you're coming into a developed nation. So when you try to go back, you will see that where you have started and where you come and then you'll totally appreciate and value what you what you have achieved over your, your time of life. But okay, so you lived in that village. Mm-hmm. So how many people were there approximately? In the village, uh, I would say in thousand. Uh, wow, or okay. Thousand. And you lived there s- until? Well, uh, so basically when I was brought up, uh, then maybe a few years uh, uh, initially, that was five, six years, I would say. And okay. then I was in Bangalore when okay. I was brought up. And uh, yeah, it's... So your parents yeah. moved to Bangalore? Well, yes. Actually, my dad was already in there. My mom's uh, was back in, in in the village. Okay. Uh, so my, my dad was already here. So you already had moved in here. Uh, that's where my grandfather was already working. So he was a he was a postman. Yeah, he had a great service of uh, 40 years uh, being in the postal service. Okay. Um, in so Bangalore? In Bangalore. In Bangalore. That's where I was brought up. I had all my initial childhood, which I can start remembering, was in Bangalore. And your dad uh, was working? So he was in in a kind of a government job then. Um, well, he started initially to the... Uh, it was the initial part of the, the Indian space research as well. That was a long time back. And then, then he moved on to a couple of private companies uh, in the mechanical industry and okay. electrical. So that was something that uh, he had specialization in, in, uh, in an electric uh, department. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I still live with, with our grandparents. And then we call them Ajja and Ajji. Yeah, that's my grandfather and grandmother. Okay. So in, 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 in Canada that we call them. 
so uh, we were all living together um, and back then for a long time we were living in a rented house we didn't had to own our houses so we had a house back in bangalore and we had a huge big garden and i used to um, had my also my cousins few cousins for a few years they started living with us as well um so it was totally a, a really fun time that i had uh, in the initial part of my uh, childhood so that was really amazing okay and and when when you are in 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 india and during your initial childhood days when you were born in 80s so that's the time that you didn't had any worry so you were really a kid of 80s having fun in a 80s way that's very it's i feel that's very unfortunate to some of the younger generations that they don't get to feel that kind of the social interactions and the fun and the kind of games that we were playing some were really dumb but in spite of <laughs> that the kind of the the kind of fun that we had uh, was totally different it's something that when you try to remember that it does create a lot of uh, you know good memories back in your mind you know uh, you said about dumb game what was like the dumbest game you played well um, the dumbest game um, or maybe like know. what was the typical dumb game you were playing well i'm i'm saying dumb when compared to the games that you have the kind of uh, the intellectual games that you have now so basically you have this you get a stick um, and then you have to choose between um, the the stone and the sand so uh so uh, randomly you call out uh, whether uh, you want to be on a stone or a sand and then you have a group of people and suddenly you need to run and then pick i don't know what you call that yeah that there is like a version of that in every, right. every country you don't you, you don't have those games right yeah. now right so. no <laughs> maybe there is still at the primary school you know where kids are still kids but definitely not primary after school. 10 so you were uh, doing your childhood uh there in that big house and then you started university yes uh well i had my the school um and my the 11th and 12th i say higher higher education and my diploma all was in the, in the, in a radius of 3 kilometers so i had my 16 years of education in a radius of 3 kilometers only i didn't had much of an exposure i was living even my engineering days in my home so the kind of exposure is was very limited to the world outside so i was pretty you know i would say a uh, kind of a geeky boy <laughs> okay <laughs> then so and then i used to and we used to also own a shop you know? okay um i used to work in the shop then so you know back in days there was these uh, the pco boots the telephone boots uh, that was there we we didn't had much of the phones back then uh, i hope i'm not sounding myself too much outdated when i was, was there in uh, 2003 uh-huh 17 years ago it's like literally at that point of my life when this was half of my life passed right. i remember that there was a lot of those cyber ca- coffee right. where you could you could pass some calls as well it was a thing back in the days right, right. i hope it improved Yes definitely because initially when there was uh, even the phones was not available in all the places so people had to you know wait for their uncle's phone or auntie's phone or even the relative's phone on on someone else on your neighbors you know you need to bank on your neighbors mm-hmm. telephone so at that time we, uh, my dad had an idea to open up that pco so he got the the permission and the license to set up the shop and now my in the in the morning uh, my grandfather and grandmother used to take in the night i used to sit in the shop mm-hmm. uh, so we had this uh, the the machine which used to record the calls and this to read the calls so that was during my initial when i was in 7th 8th and 9th and all through my 10th i was there studying also in the shop along with <laughs> along with the shop so that was totally unique experience so by now <laughs> everyone have their own phones even the kids have mm-hmm. their own phones and their pads so that's a totally different world when we were talking back then so you graduate from university at some point right. and then i was so looking forward to go outside the house because i was totally like home, you know being in home you're like uh, you just want to fly away yeah. <laughs> and stick for a long oh, time yeah. 
Um, and I was the I was the only kid for. for you my were parents. bird ready to leave the nest. Yeah, <laughs> there was something. I was just hoping for the right moment. So that's when this happens. I got my uh, campus recruitment to the IT company Accenture, okay. and then when I was in the training period, I received a mail saying that you have a new project in a different city in India called Mumbai. I'm like, damn, that's, that's, you know, the, the, the life is calling. Because <laughs> Mumbai is a complete different universe damn. than, than it's, it's Bangalore. It's all together. So I was so looking forward for this because one thing, yeah, uh, it's something, a uh, different exposure away from home. And I have so much heard about this Mumbai as a city because back then yeah they, you didn't have much of like youtubes and all that stuff so you don't know how it's gonna be how you're gonna feel that stuff so mumbai was something i really wanted to explore and then it did happen so i got my, my first flight tickets to go to mumbai and then it was since then it was totally different so i've, I've changed a lot since my uh, first uh, um, experience in mumbai yeah what was your experience then? Well, Mumbai, I would say it's 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 like a, the Indian city which doesn't sleep. So the first thing you see, you see people everywhere throughout the clock, you know. People never sleep and it's a party place. And the ladies over there, they are really matured. Because India is one place where it's not so easy that you expect to have a more of an open culture between a, a guy and a girl. So because it's always connected through your family and then the culture of, you know, dating and, you know, being freely or even a living was not there long back then. You okay. know? So that's something that really started. And Mumbai was one of the city where you could see that it was definitely well ahead with when compared to other other cities in, in India. And in terms of, of what? In, in terms of the, the adoption of uh, or the maturity of the people when it comes to understanding each other and being more open in terms of the relations, in terms of the ideas, you know, you know, it can be a simple, I would say, as I said, the, even the living is something that was more open in, uh, in so Mumbai. So Mumbai was more progressive than Bangalore? Indeed, Mumbai, when it comes to the, the the maturity of the people, was more. It might not be an IT capital with with not of uh, IT technologies, but when it comes to the human touch, Mumbai was where ahead. You can definitely give some credit to the Bollywood, you know, the Indian film industry, you yeah. know, the second largest in the world. Well, because the kind of culture, once you are in this film industry, it's more like a fashion industry as well, where you need to be more connected to the people, or I would say more of network that you need to have. So that's where I started learning or, you know, of the, of the, of the advantage of networking, where you need to meet people, where you need to connect people. That's where I started making a lot of friends back in there. That's where I met with my wife. Um, oh. So I have a huge memory of, of Mumbai and and moreover, what I really respect about Mumbai is when, when you land in Mumbai, yeah, you would see a lot of differences uh, from the people being very poor from the pe to the people being very rich. There's a huge gap when it comes to the economic, you know, the holdings that these uh, set of you know people have it. But what you really like is in the end of the week, you would find the same sort of people, no matter how rich they are, they might be earning 10 Indian rupees or they might be uh, learning 10,000 Indian rupees a day. You would still find them going to the, the Mumbai beach. It's called the Juhu beach. That's the name of the beach. And you will still find them enjoying the same ice cream or the same snacks. So that's the best part in Mumbai, no matter how rich or how poor you are, they always have a balance with how much they need to work and how much you need to enjoy at the same time. And, I, and when it comes to work, Mumbai, as I said, it never sleeps. It's always, it's one of the fastest city in India. So uh, you grew up a lot there, I guess. It was not only my, my professional experience that I worked, but I also started to learn from the people around 
no matter how much hard it's been in their life they used to maintain this routine of their life uh, in spite of the huge traffic or huge crowd um, especially when you're traveling in mumbai it's not so easy because mumbai is like a strip of uh, of uh, of a piece of land um so it's not like a it's not like like in barcelona it's more round and you have you know if you miss uh, some lanes uh, you can always use another one mumbai was always straight so you have to end up coming back to the same route so it was more chances of getting stuck in the traffic and this traffic during days uh, uh, was taking 2 to 3 hours just to reach your home <laughs> so it was really insane we were used to sit in this office bus and this and these vendors with the small packets of chips used to come when we were standing in the middle of the road and then used to offer the chips and we used to have used to play games <laughs> we used to have that was totally insane and that they did that still happen in couple of places in mumbai but yeah irrespective of that people never used to so, fall home so so are you saying that it, it wouldn't be possible to make a remake of speed in mumbai <laughs> <laughs> that, would be, that would be insanely to the next level you need to be really high if you need to find that <laughs> <laughs> that would be like slow <laughs> <laughs> actually you should make a movie called slow in mumbai in a slow 1 2 3 is to the level of slow that but uh, but yeah it's something it's something unique about indian cities especially the metro cities if people have grown their mind um, around these challenges you know they have found a way it's like indian mindset is like imagine in a flowing river you throw a stone yeah. the river will find its way around oh, yeah. it's exactly the same when you are in an in indian traffic you know you imagine there is something you know even a cow standing in the middle of a road you will people will definitely <laughs> find like a way around it or or over it and but people will not stop you know people have their priorities they wow. never stop unless it's really uh, really dangerous and crazy but um yeah if it's normal people don't st- uh, stop Man, that's, that's completely different. i was in new delhi oh and there i took the rickshaw all the time that that big scooter thing yeah the you saw the uh, auto rickshaw is it can take what maximum three people it never stops and even in the traffic and you know it's like kind of intense experience because you feel that if right now your driver is making any wrong move you're fucking dead <laughs> you know there is no a particular way to ride anything in india okay no <laughs> so everyone come up their own method of riding yeah. <laughs> so it can be in a way that you sit and driving a cycle or driving a bike or driving a car you cannot predict someone how they're going to be driving for the next no. few hours so yeah it's so you need to be really uh, with, you know with your eyes open when you're driving because yeah you might have heard the lane maintenance is is hard <laughs> it lanes are there yes but it's sometimes noticed <laughs> or i would say with the crowd that we have man <laughs> the difference like the crowd and the, the different the unique stuff in india it's so visible it's really get into you like the first time you land in india it's really like arriving on another planet almost and it's not just for um the uh, landscapes difference the 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 heritage difference i was in india in 2003 there i went to the himalayan part of the india uh, it's called ladakh zanskar it's really real north 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 india and that was probably two of the best months of my life yes it was extremely different and that from the first few hours because you just arrived after a long ass flight from Amsterdam and you arrived at New Delhi and you take a plane to go to Leh and you arrived at the airport you already see these guns because there are quite a lot of guns in the airport mm-hmm. in India uh, rifles and this is something that is really impressive 
and then you arrived at the second airport and because that area of India is at the border with China and China at that time was expecting to have a terrorist going to China by that road, there were the Chinese army at the airport. No. I was traveling with my mom. I was controlled. It's okay. My mom got controlled and she told me afterward that was not a pleasant experience. Oh, shit. That's already something completely different than what you experience in your everyday life. Right. You feel like you've seen that. The coronavirus situation is already almost a joke. Indeed, indeed. And you take that plane and it was by the night, you know, and you arrive and you have the fucking sunrise over the Himalayan mountains. <laughs> and, and you're about to land already. So you literally arrive when it's happening. And you arrived at Le, and it's like 3,200 meters high, Almost something level, like that. Yeah. And everything is yellow and orange. Wow. Because the mountains are so high that there is no possibility for the trees to grow. So the mountains are completely naked. There is no vegetation. So it's literally, you land in the middle of somewhere with no horizon and to be surrounded with a complete yellow and orange landscape it feels like you're arriving on mars <laughs> those just two points they are really expressing in a really really short way obviously how much india is uh something different so why is it for you something really different than europe for example than belgium i'm sure that Everyone and all part of the world, they have seen some or other perspectives of um, Indian culture or Indian food. I'm sure everyone, uh, one third of uh, would say, I would say of the world might have tasted even the Indian food. What's more different is the is the mindset of Indian people, which is it's not something that you can literally know about when you're watching on the TV or you're listening about them. It's more about how you're going to experience it. So that's something very unique. If you need to really experience the, the Indian taste, uh, the Indian culture, it's it's when you would live among the people. Because there are these small things that matters most is, uh, is it, it's the way of living, the way of communicating. So you would find that a lot of difference in terms of how a father and son communicates how between a husband and wife it's very unique because a lot of these things are backed up by our rich uh, culture because we have been educated strongly in our culture irrespective of which culture that how you need to support each other and how more family oriented we are and with this has a foundation and with the mindset of surrounding with a lot of other challenges that you have grown up with uh, and, and the way of living that we are in. Putting this all together with this multiple different dimension, that's that's how we are brought up with. So, and unless you are part of these different dimensions, it's not going to be easy for you to understand, you know, uh, any any religion. I'm not, not only saying about India, I'm sure it's in part of any other culture or any other religion. Yes. You know? Are you saying through your own experience that India as a country with all the different cultures that are there is a country that globally people are way better educated about life, about like the, the living the real life? I would say 50, 50. I would not to completely agree on that. The most educated, uh, you know, about uh, the people living outside India, the most uh, knowledge of the Indian people or the knowledge about the world outside is only limited to the metro cities in India. Okay. You know, when you go to uh, Delhi, Mumbai or any other tier two cities, now, okay, that, you know, everyone is having smartphones. But before that, it was very limited to these bigger cities, these metro cities. And they had more of an exposure of the culture uh, outside, you know, because the movies like in the Hollywood movies is something that will tell you more about the culture about how in, in US or how the teens are in US. It's only limited to these uh, metro cities. 
But if you go back to the rural, they have their own life. They have their own way to enjoy their day-to-day -day life. You know, they have a few set of people around them and they have set of routines that they do to ensure they're enjoying themselves. So there is always some kind of uh, ignorance to what's happening in the outside world you know now yes because of the whatsapp and youtube they're trying to connect with other stuff but because india is huge we have 1.3 billion uh, or, or close to 1.4 billion populated people uh, over there and it's not easy to come uh, to any kind of a conclusion that how strong are their uh, how knowledge is because i can maybe only be very much clear in saying okay so much of percentage in Bangalore or so much percentage in Mumbai, but the majority of people in India are living in rural people and they're, they are totally not as much as connected or having uh, proper knowledge of things around. And so that's why I say yes and no when it comes to the, the bigger cities. Yes, they are connected. They know what's happening. But outside, I would say they're still isolated, you know. So it's one way it's good and one way it's bad, you know, isolation will also help them to keep their rich culture they're enjoy, able to enjoy you know but when you are breaking that isolation you're creating a lot of expectations as well you know that you are saying oh what's the highest that you can become or yeah it's one way good and bad but yeah that's how it is but if we say an idea that is really global to everything you said is the idea that globally the indian people are happier um, than in the Western countries? Yes, definitely. I would say you can blame all the, 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 the number of Indian festivals that we have because you ensure that every festival you go to, you know, enjoy a good time with your friends and families. I'm really happy, yes, as an Indian. We do ensure in our culture to spread more fun and joy, to have more respect to the people around. Uh, with your family so you never disconnect from your family so wow. that's one of the most important lessons as you grow throughout your childhood that you always respect and be connected to your family no matter how old they are and then you always ensure that there is a lot of happiness you know the energy that you float between them and also you educate your generations about this so you would ensure that you would spread more happiness so i would not say we are the happiest people but we ensure that we would spread that happiness and that's what we educate to them so. okay that's something uh really uh spiritual <laughs> right uh, you're saying that there is that really really good point for india that is that way to enjoy life but still here you are now in belgium in a completely different environment with weather that is not as cool as in India. Why then you came to Brussels? Very good question. Uh, because this is a journey that a lot of Indian people are doing it. <laughs> so one thing which is really important is the, the financial support that we as an individual have always need to build, um, and especially when you're coming from India. It's not easy that we can always come to a conclusion that you are uh, sufficient, you're happy with, uh, with the things around over there. You always would like to have a, a different exposure, you know, because when you're growing from a smaller cities or, or small places, you always have a dream that you would like to go to America, you know, the land of dreams. Um, or go to Europe because there are a lot of beautiful things around. So there is this always a desire that is in back of your mind, but also that you'd like to go to a foreign country, you know. Okay. Um, that's something that in, in being in India, especially uh, when you are in IT, especially you being an engineer, you get a lot of value, you know, when, oh, yeah. uh, when you are being to a foreign location. You know, oh. so this this is something a kind of also a status, you know, uh, in, in your society that can build up because throughout your childhood, for example, for me, what I've also seen is that a lot of my friends or my relatives, when they go to foreign, they said, 
oh, this guy must be really smart that he was able to find a job in, in, in a foreign location. Which is actually not so difficult. Yes. So, <laughs> because right now they are hiring people from India everywhere, like in every layers of IT. That's, that's right. So you just need to go for the paperwork that it, that it exactly, goes. Exactly, exactly. So basically your filter to distinguish the, let's say, dumb people from the not dumb people is the administration system. <laughs> So you can, you can you can imagine you can you can think about it. It's it's not it's not that okay. You know we had to uh, that you had a chance that um, it was something that you for an IT that you had to come. It is something that started way back in your society that going abroad is something that you would get more respect and also if especially you are a bachelor. <laughs> Uh, you will ensure that you get more respect from your in-laws, <laughs> um, the future in-laws. So that's that's how the culture started. Then there was a hype of that you cannot get more high paid salaries of the same job that you're doing in India, especially in, uh, in Europe or in America. So everyone is ambitious when it comes to ensure building a proper legacy, uh, creating a strong wealth for your family to support your family. So this is uh, also most important factor that is uh, making them to decide for them to travel abroad. So I would say these are the the two strong reasons. Uh, so you're saying that all the, 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 the people that travels, well, that starts to live abroad, they're trying to create a legacy. Like, yeah, save money and stuff like that. Are they investing it back in the country? Well, um, over the years, this has been a huge debatable topic. It all started with a strong statement called brain drain, you know, because okay. yeah. a lot, lot many people who have been graduate and traveling to the, the states to the states there have been a very few percentage who have been traveling back uh, and, and 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 supporting back in this that has always been a something uh, that including me i would say we always have the back of a guilt back in our mind that we are not able to do as much of a contribution back to the people in india you know, where it, when it comes to bring an economy uh, back in using our knowledge to build up, you know, it can be to help up build a startup or, you know, to make yeah. ourselves more smarter. So it's always something debatable over there. It's going to be challenging to change something in India, which, which you might have started a long time back. When it comes to bringing a change, that's um, always, I'm sure, a lot of Indians living abroad might agree, is that we come from a tough political country. You know, it's not so easy. We are a democratic country, but we do have a lot of challenges when it comes to local politics, you know, when it comes to the, the infrastructure, because a lot of these politics consume a lot of people's money, the tax-saving money. Yeah, that's been always a challenge. And you living through those challenges, through those frustration, uh, it also tries to make you lose the faith, you know, uh, that, okay, uh, even if you are doing something, you're being well compensated back. Oh, that's, that's something is always uh, very hard for to convince yourself back in your mind, you know. Um, so you would not feel that, yeah, you, you know, you have, you have been part of a right justice uh, when it comes to it. You feel that, yeah, no matter how much I've been work, I'm only getting this because of, you know, these challenges or these political reasons. So it's not so easy. So at some point of time, you really give up. Uh, you know. So that's that's the reason you decided to go abroad. Yeah, all of these reasons, definitely. And as I said, financial was one of the stronger reasons for me because um, I had I had a couple of debts uh, um, from the loans that I had taken for my earlier business uh, entrepreneurships that I've done in the past. So yeah, I was looking for some uh, breakthrough, some stabilization. Also, I was more excited for the different culture uh, before. So I w I'm really like, like to travel. So that was something, one of the strong factors as well that I decided to. And then you land in Brussels. Brussels is now, Belgium is not the first country I traveled to Europe. It was Germany. 
Okay. Uh, that was a few years back, five years back. And that's when I had my initial experience in Europe. Okay. In what? So I was I was in IT as well. I was working for a Vodafone client uh, okay. back then. And I had a really good experience of first time landing in, in Germany. That was in, in Dusseldorf. Uh, it was in the mid of winter, I would say. I would say the second half of December, just before the Christmas. And it was way too much windy. I, I, I felt that my flight would be hijacked by the strong winds over there because it was all the way floating before it could touch the runway. So that was my first experience entering the Europe. I said almost um, the God is going to snatch me away from there. And then it was a good, you know, exposure for me in Dusseldorf, meeting to a lot of people. And definitely there's a huge difference in even the people in, in Germany and in, in Belgium. So I had my good experience in Germany. I met a lot of my colleagues over there, had good time. And even the city, I was in Frankfurt, I was in uh, in Dusseldorf. Uh, I really had good um, good experience. Nice. And when was it that you arrived to Brussels? So this was in the mid of September 2015. So this was uh, just less than five years. Um, so I had this contract with the Proximus. This was my first experience in uh, in the Belgium client. And the most interesting thing that I found out before traveling to uh, Belgium is that there are two official languages in Belgium. Yeah. So that was like, what? And then we were like, might have a couple of these challenges in two different languages. And then you'd be, uh, you'd be located in Brussels when there is more of French. And then it's like, okay, so it's going to be something interesting, you know, because I didn't had any option to, you know, stay along uh, initially because, yeah, definitely you have a lot of uncertainties to see how you'd be accepting the culture or the culture would be accepting you. But um, so far, um, um, I want a pretty good experience. Um, I had pretty good experience. So since 2015, uh, Man, it's five years. Yes, five years. And this is my third uh, client or slash company, I would say. I uh, was starting working for Proximus uh, for almost four years and then for Flemish government and now finally to the B post. And then now the circle is like finished because your grandpa was working in the post. Yes, this was something really I could I will always try to relate back in for uh, regarding my career is that my grandfather was in postal uh, for more than 30 plus almost close to 40 years of experience and then me getting a job in a postal that was a super coincidence and I'm so proud that I'm able to go back and connect with what he was uh, doing in the past but my role over here is more in IT but I still get the get the feel of it during the corona situation you are actually doing this thing Right, right. So this was a really fortunate um, experience. I'm getting an opportunity from my company to volunteer at the at the B post locations to help them in uh, some of the activities. They are not able to find much of the people because of the corona. And since few days, and I'm also be planning to do uh, in in couple of days in the future as well, where I can support them in some of the activities that they are falling short of manpower. So that way we can still help uh, in this critical situation to keep the services of B Post up and running. That's great. No more IT there. You already uh, touching the, the, the letters. Right, right. So it the, was really playing, you know, you know, you know, helping with the, the international packages, sorting up through different postal codes. It was purely manual work. So yes, it does gives an idea of how much uh, people in the field uh, they're working in, yeah. in the people in the post. So now we got the coronavirus situation. Yes. Oh, well, it has taken up a world with in a huge surprise where people were totally not ready for this. You know, it it was something started small. But with the magnitude it has got, it has really shook the whole world in terms of economy, in terms of social life. And it's going to be a complete reset of what's going to be coming in the near future. 
that's really interesting that situation it's really unique nobody could predict that obviously i totally feel your point about like not being ready for that uh, obviously but still we get to live uh, you can work remotely mostly doing some soft skills and volunteering to help to sort those uh, packages and everything it's amazing i'm also working from home it takes like obviously a lot of time during the week the rest of the time i'm mostly uh, working on my podcast but what are you doing actually right now during the, the quarantine like when you're not working it's most interesting time that everyone are facing where you are getting a lot of yourself time and most of your family time and you're finding a hell lot of creative uh, ways that you can keep yourself occupied uh, some ways can be really really as lazy as being on a couch for 24 hours doing nothing or watching some bad movies because you have finished watching all the <laughs> movies on Netflix so you end up something way watching something really yeah, but man. bad yeah but it's it's something that people are trying to realize that the kind of uh, the time that they have in their life that they can do uh, you know something productive or unproductive but you are getting that feeling of how much time that's there in in 24 hours basically so yeah you are talking about movies like have you ever watched some cool movies recently like let's on netflix on the Netflix, um, I've been following a lot of uh, series, I would say, especially I'm still in love with The Homeland, uh, the series that has been uh, from last eight to nine years on the showtime. With- Homeland is, uh, yeah, it's almost a decade. It was not expected to be that long, but think that it's a, it's a series that still holds true time. Right. I kind of think that the first seasons were the best. Right. But still, it, it, it's really, really entertaining. So, so you're watching that. Yes, yes. Indeed, uh, as you really has mentioned that it does showcase some of the, the, some of the actions that countries take it or to be very specific in from talks about the United States, how it has been part of the warfare uh, when it comes to the Middle East countries uh, and how they are trying to work it out things in terms of bringing peace. But, there, it's not as easy as said. There are a lot of challenges uh, when it comes to the internal politics or when it comes to multiple other countries. So definitely, Home Homeland is one of that series that I would say it has grown along with a couple of governments that have been built, especially in US. I'm sure Homeland is not only the only series. I also seen series like Designated Survivors. I haven't um, seen it yet. Wow, that's something as well. Uh, it also push you to a limit of how much a power of uh, an American president can be, you know, stretched and what he can do, he cannot do, and what are the challenges that has been uh, he goes through. And so that has been also one of the really nice, especially the 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 Kurtman character that has been played uh ways the same guy who's been part of 24 Kiefer Sutherland yes it must be good it's it's really nice and it really grows up with a lot of challenges every single day is a new day for uh someone being the the strongest president in in the world so it does depicts his, his day-to-day life and other stuff and yeah it's it's not so easy and then the the most important part and and also not to forget the house of cards that's uh, okay that's that's i have a different. problem <laughs> with house of cards but i don't feel like i want to get into any kevin spacey mm-hmm. piece of art mm-hmm. or even if i want to promote this kind of stuff for the reason that the guy is playing a shady character right. when he was real shady himself yeah so he he plays as a, one of the Highly influential congressman, but he has a dark side. That also helps him to get his way all the way till the presidency. So it does shows what can be some of these factors that can influential your decision making all the way till being uh, being a president as well. So yes, it shows how politics works. Yeah. But yeah, you might find some of these 
scenes really you know dark especially knowing that Kevin Spacey was accused for like some you know sexual abuse House of Cards might be too dark for me right so but i would say it exposes the possibility of how a person in some of the higher uh, positions can go dark or can go to abuse some of the powers that's in there so you would recommend it definitely yes it's it might be slow what's most important that i felt is when you're watching some of these political series you would get a lot of the learnings in terms of how a political decision can be changed or influence how these political decisions so you would get a lot of awareness in terms of how a country can be misled or how a bill can be misled or how a person can be misled and what can be the different factors that leads to misleading so there are some things yeah you might need to ignore because it gets more darker but from from a series from an, there are a lot of learnings also to understand and how basically you play with the 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 emotional intelligence part um, and then with the right facts and figures uh, you can have really strong power in your words that while you speak so you really like smart tv shows <laughs> that's what you're saying <laughs> well i would not say that but i do observe a lot of people so anything that comes out of their mouth is something that i would really put a, a thought in my mind so you recommend house of card and homeland Mm-hmm. and designated survivor. and designated so oh, yes. all right all uh i recommend it's a classic i recommend breaking bad uh-huh it's just like it's the best i i started watching the first series but i'm so looking forward to uh, you know continue because even there was a movie that came up the breaking bad don't movie don't watch the breaking bad movie <laughs> that's something that i wanted to watch that i went through the whole plot and stuff but i really didn't i said okay let me watch the the series i am telling you take the time to enjoy it maybe one two maximum three episodes per day it's like watching movie mm-hmm. every episode you're going to feel you're going to experience like intense emotion because it's all about crazy situation you know like totally the less probable situation you could have but the build up of the character is so good that in each situation you're wondering like what would i do if it was me okay that is really good because then it unsettles you all the way through the the tv show the the cinematography is perfect the acting is perfect and and what's awesome now is that there is that spin off mm-hmm. so it's also recommend that i give you it's called better call soul okay and it's about a character that is introduced in the season 3 of breaking bad okay his name is Saul Goodman he's a lawyer and the story in better call soul is before breaking bad okay uh though now it's 10 years later so you know the the actors they look older and everything but still it works it's good all the way i'm definitely going to put on and, my and list, uh, yeah. like so breaking bad all in all is like 60 episode mm mm-hmm. and better call soul is close to 60 already okay do you have uh, something else to recommend like maybe a tv show or a, a movie well um for for past a month i've been watching the the fresh prince of bel air i don't know if you recommend that <laughs> it is it is something that push you back in time and then it's something really off you know you want to off beat something yeah, uh, man. it's really something uh, it's, so it's... we we ensure that we watch half an hour of every episode before we go to sleep that <laughs> that puts some bit of humor in your mind and it's always fun to watch will smith <laughs> when is his best that's like really young will smith I mean that was like before way before bad boys way before independence wow, day wow. Oh. he he's always been a, one of the 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 famous guy who's always been looking forward because he has a lot of character uh, in his expressions or in his movies this lot when he acts something you know you can literally feel his emotions flowing in and out of any character he plays so there was there are some of my experiences uh in in most of the movies at all i have a problem with will smith i think that the guys can but for some reason it doesn't all the way i'm talking about really acting the shit mm-hmm. out of it i guess that like the strongest role he had uh it's ali mm-hmm. and man there was not 
enough. It didn't like bring Ali to life. And, and since that time, I, I never felt like he was able to have any really strong performance where you can put him like at, at a rank that you could see him in every movie and it would be good. I mean, like, for example, I watched that Bright movie on Netflix. Right. And it already feels like a downfall from... Right. From no, The Bright is not one of... the definitely is not one of his good movies. Still top of my list. Uh, Positive Happiness, Seven Pounds. I still love the independence, the old Independence Day out uh, there. The, the most important part is that all is in roles. You, you still find... His originality when it comes to the expressions that he pops out in, you know, very instantaneously. When I was watching this Prince of Bel Air and watch I watch his movies, there are still this originality of some of these expressions about how to handle some of the situations and, and the expression that comes out for this. So, The Pursuit of Happiness is always yes. been one of my best movies, especially when he tries to show some of the emotions um, of you know a, a crying or trying to uh, make himself stronger in difficult situations and the emotions that he puts out on his face that's something I'm hardly I haven't seen in many of other people you know so that's very strong emotions and and does makes a lot of a difference yeah man that's that's very true I, with with that pursuit of happiness I just have like one problem why did they try to make it a real story? It is a real story. Yeah, but man, in real life, the guy didn't took care about the kids at all. They, they played so much on the relationship uh, between the kids and the, the father, especially casting the own son, <laughs> young Jaden, uh, as, as the, the, the son of the guy. That, you know, it's really cheating like with the audience in some way. Oh. It's almost like trying to rewrite history. I would say... Yes, not every movies do get to produce and to get it directed in the way it has been. But somewhere you always need some kind of a push that would still, you know, get a best out of a picture. I think that that was the reason that even in the story that you might have felt that the kind of a father-son relationship that they were trying to project out is something that really you know, motivated him to think further uh, in his life that did uh, did push him to take up the job uh, to study hard so um, yeah it might the push might be smaller in the real life but um, it was very important for, for in the movie to feel that impact so I believe that they had uh, they did project m- much more yeah. than what I was expecting I think so Okay, so you recommend French Friends of Bel Air as yeah. well The Pursuit of Happiness because right. it is on uh, on Netflix right, right now right. So you know what? I've just seen what I what I re- recommend, and it's a movie that I haven't seen yet. It's the movie Red Dragon. Mm-hmm. It's from two thousand two, and it's with Anthony Hopkins and Edward Norton. Wow! And the story is like what happens before Silence of the Lambs. Now I get the plot. Okay, and Silence of the Lamb was amazing movie. And it's about basically Edward Norton is that uh, Will Graham AVI and Anthony Hopkins is helping him to catch uh, serial killer. It's the second a- adaptation mm-hmm. of the that novel, Red Dragon. There was first one of the first um, Michael Mann movie. It's called uh, Manhunter with William Peterson from uh, CSI. Oh, okay. He's uh, playing the detective and it's amazing. It looks like an old movie now, but it's still really good. And there is that second adaptation. Now it's like uh, 2002. And that's my recommend. I'm going to watch it tonight. (laughs) That's great. That's nice. Yeah. So you recommend The Poor Seat of Happiness, French Press of Valor, Homeland, House of Cards and Designated Survivor. Yes. And I recommend... Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, and Red Dragon. <laughs> Even if I haven't watched it, it's <laughs> well, it's definitely. Uh, I'm sure the Red Dragon is something I'll definitely put on my agenda for the next few days. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of time during this time. So, so. Um, yeah, man, I'm I'm so happy I can help you with that. And so I think it's gonna be it for this episode. Thank you for coming, Madhu. Thank it you was so much. Super appreciated. Thank you so much. <laughs> So as usual, if you want to comment, to like, to 
8. Post something so you can find this podcast on SoundCloud and YouTube. There is a Facebook page. There is an Instagram page. So uh, all the way to find us. Obviously, I will post the information about the festival, the food festival that you that we talked about. And well, uh, thank you for listening and see you next time. Thanks for listening. Comment and check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook and Instagram. See you next time. It was very few people, I guess. It was uh, Amina that she had a file mm. that she had everything in play. That Man. took a lot of patience to have yeah. everything sorted. And then otherwise, whenever we had, I think, a uh, couple of guys getting married over there. That was uh, Amira and uh, and uh, Zia. That there was, was two couples in the, in the couples. class. And then we were like so excited because we were getting so... Uh, close as a friend so we were really excited about them getting married so we, were, we used to talk about a lot about how their their the marriage is been now uh, you know the preparation activity is going on so we were also equally excited <laughs> we were so high you know it was hard uh, for us to realize that how much of noise that we were making you know all well, together we went to eat burgers together yeah, yeah i think yourself kenzo and yeah and uh, Amira was there as well. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, apparently, you didn't meet them, but they were around there. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't meet. Probably, yeah, we yeah, just yeah. Uh, missed each other. It's huge. With like an open mindset, because I think that there are a lot of reasons why Indian people live in India as well, and it's not just for the job. Uh, I think that uh, probably some people feel, uh, let's say. Like need that to experience a different lifestyle, um, but yeah, I it's just because of something in the the hair. Mm-hmm. How so? What what is this? You know, the kind of uh, the the spring festival happens. Yeah. You know? Oh my god, I'm gonna throw a rock. You can say if I'm totally wrong or not, but. There could be like some kind of you know like for the really biggest company that would move to India. Uh, like some kind of tax uh, bonus like for the five first year they don't pay this tax or for example uh, it's it's like so you're doing the real stuff some of these series are built on some true facts that the people or the producers might have seen in the countries and then try, try to project in terms of the series but at the same time, it can also put a reverse effect of how it can educate and can make an impact to an existing administration of how it can change and what can be the possible outbreaks or what can be the possible impact of few of the decisions or the bills that they can in. And what, what, what I could have done, what I would have done if it was me. Man, the French freeze are better. That's like, wow, that's... Bad boys, bad boys.